I don't know how long this series is going to last, but I have a whole lot. I have stuff I haven't even gotten to. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But I do my best as a young man of God to follow the, the leading of the Holy Ghost. I try to follow His leading, put myself under authority of the Spirit of God, the Word of God, and I receive instruction. I don't act like I know it all. It sound, I sound like I'm all that. Well, I got news for you, folks. I study. <laughs> I study. I'm training all the time. That's the God's honest truth. I train when I'm at the gym. I have headphones in. I'm listening on, on how to do ministry, about the manifestations or the gifts of the Holy Ghost, how to listen to God. I've been listening to a series lately, how to hear from God, how to be led by the Holy Ghost. So I'm learning. I'm in the learning process just like you are. And what I learn, I share with you, and it works. It's effective stuff. Revelations chapter 2. Now grab your Bible if you have one and look it up. Lift it up and look at this with me. I want to begin at verse 2. Just that one verse. Follow me. Ready? Jesus is speaking to the seven churches of Asia Minor. He's, uh, the Apostle John is on the Isle of Patmos. Jesus sent a message by his angel to John, the Apostle John. And this is what Jesus says to his churches. Verse 2, I know thy works. Now I want you to remember we're talking about doing the works of Jesus. Go down to verse 9. I know thy works. That's two times. Verse 13. I know thy works. That's three times. Verse 19, I know thy works. That's four times. By the way, folks, Jesus is speaking. Chapter 3, verse 1, the latter clause, I know thy works. That's five times. Chapter 3, verse 8, I know thy works. There he goes again, right? And then the last one, verse 15, I know thy works. Jesus is speaking. And he's speaking to the churches. And I got news for you. He's speaking to the churches today. And he's saying, I know your works. Now, let's go right back to chapter 2. And I'm going to get a little more specific now. And before I do that, let me say this again. Jesus knows exactly what he assigns you to do. He knows what you're doing with the talent that he gave you. Remember in Matthew chapter 25? He gave out one to five, one, two, one, one talent. Came back to reckon with him. And he wanted to know what you do with what I gave you. So let me ask you, what did you do with that anointing on your life? What did you do with that calling to be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher? What did you do about those five books God told you to write? Did you open up that business God told you to, to open up? He, he wants to know. What did you do? Because remember, everything's ministry related. Your business, that book that you're supposed to write, yeah, all those things are ministry related. God has world evangelism on his mind. Always. God thinks about saving souls, folk, all the time. Everything he does is soul related. Everything he does for you, he's thinking about the future. He wants souls saved. He's thinking about how, how that book's going to land in the hand of some, some poor girl who will just be hopeless and aimless, happen to walk in the thrift store and find a book, and you wrote it. And she has no direction whatsoever. And there's something that you say that makes her call upon the name of the Lord. God has world evangelism on his mind. That book is not just about you. That song that you sing is not just about you. There might be a soul sitting in the pew, thinking about giving up, wanting to commit suicide. Don't know which way to go, but she went to church and she's sitting on the back row. And all of a sudden, you'll stand up and say, this is a new song the Lord gave me. And I really don't have all the words to it, but I'm just going to go ahead and sing the chorus. Come. And that young girl will come down and give her life to the Lord Jesus because you sung your song. Say this with me. Everything is ministry related. Please never forget that. I'm putting that in my new book. I'm talking about being kingdom minded. You have to stay kingdom minded. It's all about the kingdom. It's all about Jesus. It really, you want to be honest with you, has absolutely nothing to do with you. Once you're saved, you are not only his child, you are his servant. He washed you in his blood because he loved you. And he made you a king and a priest so that you can serve God. The Bible says you're a chosen generation. You were handpicked and selected. You're not an accident. You didn't, you didn't get out of the mess you got up because you're so cool or so slick or so cute or because of your walk and that you think you got all that. God chose you on purpose. He chose the foolish things and base things and foolish things so that he can get souls saved. All the glory belongs to him. Glory to God. I believe it's Psalm 105 where it says, oh, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto your name be the glory. Or Psalm 15, one of them. You get all the glory. It has nothing to do with me. Anyway, Revelation chapter 2, look at verse 2. I know thy works. 
in thy labor and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and hast tried them, and say they are apostles, and are not, and found them to be liars, and has borne, and has patience for my name's sake, and has labored, and has not fainted. Doesn't that sound really good? Jesus commending you really good. And then he goes on to say, Nevertheless, I do have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, repent and do the first works. Now remember, works was mentioned seven times, once to each church. And then he mentions it here, he talks about first works. And so I came up last week and I said that the body of Christ as a whole, and then individually examine yourself. Repent means that I need to change some things, change my mind, my ways, my actions. There's some things I need to check on and change myself. And I need to do the first works. Now, the word first simply means that there are these things come before all others. They're primary, right, in the order of things. Remember the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. He was talking about priorities. I'll give you the stuff. I'll add the things, the Gucci bag and the red bottom shoes and the kind of car. I'll give you that. Folk, God's not broke. No, he said your priorities have to be straight. Seek ye first, primary. This has to come first. So these church at Ephesus... They were doing works, right? The Bible says you're born, you had patience, you tried them to say they're apostles, you labored for my name's sake. See, but those things to Jesus were second, third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah. He wanted to know about first works. Yeah. I don't have a problem with you doing all the other stuff. See, he commended them. He built them up and edified them. God, this is great. I know it. I've been watching you guys. I've been watching every church in Asia Minor. I know exactly what everybody's doing. I'm watching the churches in Africa. I'm watching the churches over in the United States of America. I'm watching the churches in Russia and South Korea. I know your works over there in Southeast D.C. I know what you're doing over, over at WPGR, World Power Gospel Radio. Nevertheless, I have this one thing against you. I got to deal with this, this primary thing, the first love, the first works. And as I examined myself uh, a couple of weeks ago, I thought about it. I said, what would Jesus say to me? Ooh. Gary, I know you're doing this and you're doing that. That's wonderful. You know, you're doing this for the church and da da da, you know, whatever. And then he comes and says, Nevertheless, I do have this one thing. Boy, I wonder what it would be. That would shake me. You know what I mean? That Jesus saying, Look, I know what you're doing. And then begins to, to, to with the word of knowledge, tell me everything that I'm doing. I'll be like, Whoa, you're sharp. <laughs> oh, you're God. Okay, I need to repent. I need to change some things. Okay, and he said, get back to the first works. Now, that bears the question or brings up the question, what are the first works? Thank you, Father, for the anointing. I sense the anointing of God on me. What are the first works? Let's go to the Gospel of John, chapter 14. I'm going to take my time with it. This is a series, folks. This is a series of lessons. Gospel of John, chapter 14. What are the first works? And you know what I found out without being too deep? You don't have to get deep with this stuff. The Bible will answer itself. If you're a regular listener of this broadcast, you know I say this all the time. There is no answer like a Bible answer. The Bible will always answer itself. Always. It'll ask a question, it'll answer it. I think it's called uh, a rhetorical question. God will ask a rhetorical question. <laughs> he asked Philip, um, where are we going to get bread to feed these folk? He already knew the answer. The Bible said he knew how he was going to do it. See, when God says something, he already knows the answer. He's not asking because he doesn't know. Adam, where art thou? It wasn't like God didn't know where he was. He wants to check you. Mm -hmm. Do you know where you are? Do you know what you just did? <laughs> Glory to God. And so what are the first works? Gospel of John, chapter 10. Jesus is speaking. Now, you're going to have to put on your spiritual thinking cap. You're going to have to come up to another level this time, folks. You can't think traditionally with this. I want you to act like you've never read the scripture before. Jesus said, Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Somebody say works. Now remember, we're talking about doing the works of Jesus. We're establishing the fact, or answering the question of what are the first works. Now before we do that, I want you to notice the connection between words and and works. Notice what Jesus said. The words that I speak unto you. I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. See the connection? Words, then works. 
words than works. Hold your place. Go to back to Matthew chapter 9. Jesus went about all their cities and villages. Here we go. Teaching and preaching. What are teaching and preaching? Words. Now remember he said in Gospel of John, the words that I'm speaking, this teaching and preaching I'm doing, I'm not doing it of myself. The Father that dwells in me, he's doing the works. Notice the next one. Healing every manner of sickness and every manner of disease. Teaching, preaching, then healing. Teaching, preaching, then healing. Teaching, preaching, and then healing. I'll say it again till you get it. Teaching, preaching, and then came the healing. The words that I speak, the teaching and the preaching, it's the Father doing the works of healing. Does that make sense? The healings and the miracles, that came after he was speaking. Do you remember what he said? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. Notice the preaching came first. And then he says, and to heal the brokenhearted. Speaking came first. Go to the Gospel of Mark chapter 16. Let me establish this really quickly. And then we'll move on. I'm going to review this next week anyway, so don't, don't fret. We'll go over it again next week. 16 and 15. The Bible says, Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go down to verse 20. And when they went forth and what? Preached or they spoke words. And the Lord did what? Working with them. Confirming the word with signs following. What did God confirm? The word. The words came first, then the signs. Teaching and preaching, then the healing. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. The Father dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Let me say it another way. If I don't speak what the Father says, there won't be no works. Now, I don't know if I can get any more plain than that. You have to speak the word. Isn't that powerful? Man, I wish I had more time to get on that. But the words come first, then the signs follow. If you want results, you have to act on the word. Isn't that right? I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. I'm not going to push that any further. I think I gave you enough to meditate on. We've established the fact today that there are millions of people on the face of the earth. They're fainting all kinds of ways. They're spiritually, physically, financially, in their relationships. They're fainting in their minds. They're giving up. They're depressed. They're despondent. They're in debt. They're in discontentment. People are suffering and they need help. And Jesus, like he was moved with compassion then, is moved with compassion now. For he knows that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus is the one that said that, by the way. When you quote John 3, 16, Jesus said that. He was speaking when he said that. God, in other words, God sent me that the world can live through me. He's not willing that anybody should perish. He wants all men to be saved. He wants all men to come to a knowledge of the truth. All includes you, folks. I know you might be sitting there on that couch and think it's too late that you should have another drink and another pill. Jesus said, I still love you. That pill's not going to stop my love. You're not going to change my purpose and plan for you because you're out there getting high and you want to marry another man and you're a man and you think that I, I'm going to stop loving you. No, I want you to be saved. Once I get you into my house and into my bosom and get my word in you, all those crazy thoughts and things you're thinking, that stuff, you'll, you'll drop that. I'll, I'll help you with that, but I first need you to receive my son Jesus. I need you to bring your car to the car wash, in other words. I'll clean up the car. It's not your job to clean it when you bring it to me. I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to clean your life up from the inside out. I'm going to, I'm going to spray your tires. I'll have you shining. Glory to God. When I send you out, you'll be brand new. People will notice the difference. They're going to know something happened to you. And they're going to take note that he had been with Jesus. She must have came in contact with Jesus. And that's what he wants to do for you today, folks. And the gospel is the only way. The good news of how God so loved you and he gave his only begotten son, how Christ died for your sins, how he was buried and God raised him from the dead on the third day. That's my gospel. And if you believe what I just said, I want you to say this very simple prayer with me. Say, God, I believe this gospel that was preached today. I believe your son Jesus died for my sins, that you raised him from the dead on the third day, and I confess Jesus as Lord. Please go to my website, drgarengatling.org. That's D-R-G-E-R-E-N, Gatling, G-A-T-L-I-N-G, dot org. Or just put in Garen Gatling. I'll pop up somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, Garen Gatling Evangelistic Association. If you need a Bible, I'll send you a Bible. Go ahead and write me. If you want to contact the ministry, all that stuff's on my website. If you want to stay in contact via Twitter, Twitter or something, it's all in my website. You can contact me. And I'd love to hear your testimony. Until next week, 
Please remember that Jesus is Lord.